Hello, everybody, and welcome into Frank's Retirement Home. We got a Walker Division matchup coming your way today between the Calder's Good Boys and Bodega Hive. I am Dr. Shrew, joined by Ix Iso, who I just realized never asked you how to say your name before, but welcome, welcome in. Hopefully I said it right. It's ISO. Everybody oh, always gets okay. confused saying it the first time. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> well, as pegs and bands are getting well underway here, how are you feeling heading into this one with uh, what we got so far? I'm excited to see this set. I heard it was a close one. Yeah, should be a good one. Band so far coming through. We got Bastet, Ravana, and Scylla on the side of Calder's Good Boys. While Bodega Hive taking away the Pele, the Athena, and the Ranatosker. The, the the Rat, the the Athena, the Bastet. Those make sense to me. Those are tried and true right now. But the rest of the bands a little bit more, I, I guess, comfort pick for these players. How are you feeling about what we're seeing? Actually, Ravana got a nice little buff. In the last patch, I don't know if anybody knows this, but he actually does crazy damage right now, and I enjoy playing him in the jungle currently. Uh, the Scylla, I am also not too sure about though. That seems a little targeted. Probably is a bit of a target ban there. But this picks and ban phase is just flying. We got Ganesh locked in first overall for the KGB, and then on the other side, Bodega Hive gonna lock in the Sun Wukong and the Chernabog. To answer back, I feel like Wukong has just, he kind of got quiet for a bit with the mage solo meta. And now, I mean, is he just back? Are we just always going to have Wukong now? Oh, I don't think he went too quiet during the mage solo meta. I think <laughs> the people who were stubborn and were like, I'll beat mages even with a warrior still played Wukong. He's just, he's always been a nice addition to the solo lane you know you got that sustain you got that damage and all the safety too it's just so hard to catch a wukong if if they have everything up and available nike and thanatos gonna be the picks on the other side to round out the top three for the calder's good boys and geb gonna round out the top three for bodega hive and Nike is another warrior that's just, I feel like, kind of been around for a little bit of a comfort pick for a lot of players here. Yeah, Nike's so safe as well. You think you got her, and then boom, half of her health bar or three quarters of her health bar is now shield. <laughs> yeah, definitely a good lock in there. The Geb as well, you pair that up with the Chernabog, that lane doesn't really scream early pressure to me but it's very very safe which seems to be the name of the game for this one as well as some some good scaling into the late game do you like the dual lane for bodega hive here oh yeah i really like it uh gab i'm a little traumatized from from gabs they uh they hurt my feelings anytime <laughs> i'm trying to dive anybody <laughs> Yeah, that, that stone the, shield with the knockup always going to be problematic for anybody trying to dive like T Pity on this Thanatos. Yep, and then that uh, Chernabog, you know, can't go wrong with that. Global presence. Hey, I'm going to split push over in duo lane. You guys want to fight at fire? Okay, I'll be over there. It's like we're waiting on the fourth pick here for Bodega Hive. They need, I, you would assume they need a mid and a jungle. We could see some of these picks go in strange positions. Is there anything kind of standing out to you that could be a good lock in here? Um, you're going into a Thanatos. So, like I said, anybody who goes up in the air, you always want to grab some sort of dot. Right? Because you're going to do damage. If they come back down into the fight, not realizing how much damage that dot actually did to them. It could spell disaster for their entire engagement. It's going to be the Giannis that is locked in here. Another safe mid lane mage, as well as a god that can kind of help the team rotate around another global ultimate to pair up with the Chernabog. I mean, do you think it's just going to be a lot of rotations coming out of this Bodega Hive team? I think they, they're going to try to rotate. But, you know, you've also got Thanatos prowling the jungle. You've got Jingwei safety to just fly away. 
from any damage that tries to find her. Yeah, this really does feel like safety the video game here for this for for game one. I feel like so many members on both sides just have a ton of safety within their kits. Probably the least safe would be like Ganesh and Thanatos, but even Thanatos can go up and Ganesh is just going to be tanky. Uh, I mean, this could be like a, a low kill game, depending on how it plays out. Low okay, kill, you got a Thanatos still. Let's the execute. Definite hit Wukong before he goes up in the air. Stop Geb from punishing your team. Oh, that's the first unsafe lock-in we've seen the Cuckoo. Yeah, definitely not a safe pick there. Just got the movement speed from the Zephyr, and that is about it. But the damage that you can put out with this god right now just feels so good. Even if it is just press three and walk away simulator, the tornado just does so much, and that Spirit of the Nine Winds being able to secure things can keep up with what the... Uh, through space and time secure is going to have on the other side a lot of objective shred as well on both of these t teams so far we're just waiting on presumably the jungle pick for bodega hive right now i'm curious of what they're going to lock in to kind of round out their top five well, like i said dot can't go wrong with dot damage bastet or daji but they opt for the thor not a bad pick into the Thanatos either. Yeah, and more more global presence, or at least semi-global, in this case with the Anvil of Dawn, really leaning into that rotational power that they're going to have as a team. We can see both drafts now, all five locked in on either side. I'm going to ask you the hard question here, Iso. Do you feel like either team got away with uh, an edge going into game one, or is it is it too close to call? I think it's too close, honestly. I feel like this game is whoever can run away the best. <laughs> like... I think might as well just end up playing hide and seek because they're just going to be able to get away from absolutely anything, run into the jungle. But as you mentioned, there's there's some some burst damage on both these teams too. The Thanatos having the execute is the the easy one to go towards, but. I mean, once we get towards the late game, it, it feels like, you know, Unstable Vortex from, from the Giannis is is going to feel like an execute with how much burst it can do. Jing Wei scales so hard like we know. I feel like if this game well, makes it to that late game, that hyper late game, we could see just kill after kill after kill, even without, even with the safety. Yeah, and they, you mentioned the Jingwei burst, but you also got to remember they picked a Geb. Jingwei's entire being revolves around crit, typically. Very true. Yeah, that that the stone shield again just making it so hard there. This this has all the makings of being a good one between these two teams, and I feel like there's a world where we see a. A very slow early game. Uh, am I am I wrong? No, I, I'm imagining a really slow early game. You're not going to see much action in the jungle. Probably not much action in solo besides the warriors slapping each other. We're back to that. We're just warriors slapping each other up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely, most of the action is probably going to be concentrated in mid and duo. People trying to pull out ahead to get themselves online and start to take over in these uh, in this uh, mid to late game. Yeah, just getting that farm, stopping your opponent from getting that farm, definitely going to be the name of the game here. I, I got a question for you, Iso, a genuine one, because I, at least as far as I knew, Warrior's Axe, not really the best of starters. I imagined we'd see double blue stones coming out, but it's, it's Axe for both of these solo laners. What do you think the reasoning behind that is? Axe got buffed. It provides more protections, I believe, now. It does a little bit more damage. It Minions have spawned. And those two upgrades are better than Bluestone upgrades, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. The upgrades definitely, even before the, uh, even before the buff, felt a lot better than 
and some of the bluestone ones. I definitely, you know, you can't shy away from a Sundering Axe, you know, hey, that Axe of Animosity looks attractive, but that Sundering Axe, you know, you get those protections going, and that's, that's big burst for warriors right there in itself. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what the buff kind of looks like and what it, what it looks like it feels like on both of these warriors, at least in particular. Sticking with the, uh, the talk about builds in the mid lane, we often see Giannis's go towards the Conduit Gem into the Kronos Pendant. But it seems like Scooby Daddy is going to go towards the Conduit Gem into what I imagine will be a Book of Toth. Not going to have that early cooldown. Uh, do you like where he's taking the build so far? Uh, I honestly don't know much about mids. I always thought it was just the uh, Sands of Time into Book of Toth anyway. Yeah, for most mages, 100% is that is just the start. Giannis usually plays a bit different, but maybe Scooby Daddy's cooking a little bit. Mm, well, we're going to see. Hopefully, hopefully he cooks on it. As you mentioned, a little bit of damage over here in the solo lane. I assume beating each other up. Wukong getting the early pressure, not too surprising. But Thanatos has had an early rotation over here. Sniper Glenn in the left lane going to look to maybe get something started. Just the shield buff seems to be the point of contention. It looks like either team going to commit too much and buff will go the way of Calder's good boys. So at least that going in their direction early on here. Yeah, that early farm is going to be really essential for this duo. Trouble though for Lone Wolf on the Nike is tanky is safe as we mentioned, but can you get away from the damage? No, Jungle Jimmy. We get credit for first blood over here in the solo lane, kicking things off right for Bodega Hive. I mean, come on, Nike, you don't have your ult yet. You can't, you can't just go out like that. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like it's going to be a protectors first overall for Lone Wolf on the Nike. Going to need a while to to kind of get those stacks online and start scaling up that defense. Do you want to see Jungle Jimmy make more rotations over to the solo lane because of that? Um, I don't know. I'm confused what, why Nike would start Prophetics in the first place. Like, maybe it's going to be a Magi cloak, but I honestly wouldn't want to see it either. <laughs> yeah. It will be interesting to see how that goes. It's going to make Lone Wolf very tanky once we get in towards that late game, once that Prophetic is fully stacked. It's going to make this already hard to deal with. God with the double health bars even more challenging to deal to deal with just in general. Yeah, it looks like Calder's good boys strategy is definitely late game. You know, we... We don't want this early game, we want this late game. That's where it really matters. That's where we kill the Titan. Yeah, I mean with Ganesh, with, with Jing Wei and with, with Cuckoo, I don't I don't disagree with that mindset. I feel like they have very good scaling and then they have that Thanatos to kinda help them out and bridge that gap towards the late game. The Wukong now the one in trouble. Sentinel of Zeus not gonna be able to confirm the kill. It did look like Sniper Glenn was nearby, but not going to be able to find anything on Ben Dizzle there who successfully gets that back off. And it's always nice to just bird away from any damage that may come your way. Yeah. Alt online now for both of the junglers. Always something to, to keep an eye on where this first Anvil of Dawn is going to go, where the first Hovering Death is going to go. Uh, is it? Uh, we've seen so much dual lane pressure and dual lane prioritization as of late. Do you think we're gonna see more of that or are Chernabog and Jingwei just too safe as Jungle Jimmy's gonna prove me wrong immediately up into the Anvil of Dawn, gonna look to dive underneath the tower here. Lone Wolf in trouble once again and Lone Wolf will fall for the second time this game. Jungle Jimmy able to get that kill or Ben Dizzle getting credit for that kill with the help of the Thor. Yep, yeah, just under tower, unfortunate, and Villadon comes out. You took two ults, right? That's that's what really counts, right? And Villadon's out, it's not gonna hit your mid laner or your ADC. 
Yeah, good cooldown to get out of the way here. Five minutes into this game so far, both kills happening over in the solo lane, both kills on to Lone Wolf, who's fallen a little bit behind, does not have that prophetic bot quite yet. Well, Glad Shield is available on the other side for Ben Dizzle. I, I always wonder how much a jungler should look at a lane once they get their, their teammate a lead. How many ganks do you think is too many ganks? Um, if, if that lane is two levels ahead and you're ganking, you're, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you at that point, you're just stealing farm. You're not, the, it's kind of a high risk, low reward scenario. You know, Cause even if you do get the kill, you're not getting much from it. You, you, you'd be better off taking a jungle camp. Well, we'll have to see if, if Jungle Jimmy decides to look elsewhere. We saw beads needed to be used by Green Dragon there in the mid lane to get away from some of the pressure that came out. Also using that that Cuckoo ult uh, on the the mid harpies on the right side there. Kind of similar to a, a Searing Pain, I guess. You can just throw it out to, to clear some minions. <laughs> Oh, I don't know about that. The <laughs> ult? Using your ult to clear some mid camp? It seems a little crazy to me, but to each their own. Need that XP. How worth it is it, though? Also interesting little thing that, that doesn't really matter anymore, but before Book of Toth was finished, it looked like Enchanted Spear was picked up for Green Dragon getting a little bit uh, into that flat pen tree before finishing out the first item. I don't know if that was just a not enough gold situation, but now the Book of Toth is is online, starting to get stacked for both of these mid laners. They're both going to start to look pushing themselves further and further towards that mid to late game like you talked about earlier. Well, looks like Cuckoo is just trying to stay ahead of the curve. Yeah, look at that. He's already like an I a uh, part of an item ahead of Giannis. <laughs> Yeah, just working on that farm. I feel like Cuckoo is just is just farming simulator for the beginning part of the game. You drop the tornado, then you wander somewhere else so you can drop the tornado there. Not a whole lot of boxing potential, at least in the early game, until you get a couple items and some more levels online. You definitely need that poly. <laughs> yeah. Just Zephyr into a poly auto, boom, your entire health bar is gone. It's like Anvil of Dawn was used in the mid lane there, as well as the three space and time, and it's a sliver of HP left, but Lone Wolf is the one that falls in solo, gets soloed out by Ben Dizzle. Action happening in two lanes at once, and again, it's going the direction of Bodega Hive. I don't think Wukong expended his ult until he was proxying the wave back there. I wonder, I wonder what happened in that solo lane there. <laughs> I mean, definite item advantage for Ben Dizzle right now. Prophetic finally finished up here for a Lone Wolf. You can finally start stacking that item that takes so long to stack depending on how the game's going for you. I feel like from behind, Prophetic just feels so bad. I mean, and usually Prophetic is actually what sets you behind. It's a really expensive item. It doesn't stack until 25, 27 minutes in the game. Have we seen a, a death from above from Sniper Glen yet? I don't know if we've really seen this Thanatos try and find an Executor, at least a, like a stun with that super impactful early game ult. Mm, I don't know if he has done it. I mean, in my opinion, most of the time, the execute isn't what you're doing, like, unless your team is absolutely running things over. It's not what you're really looking for, because even if you just land on somebody, they're probably going to die with Thanatos damage. Mm -hmm. Taking a look but at... Maybe... Oh, my well, Anvil of going to get used here to maybe interrupt a conversation we might have been having, but... All the members of Calder's Good Boys well aware of it back completely underneath their tower. Here's that Thanatos halt we were talking about earlier. Sniper Glenn trying to get the counter engage. 
Jungle Jimmy doesn't really seem to care. Just stripping farm, stripping jungle away from this KGB team and able to just walk away without any issue. Now, the one thing I do like about the Thanatos is when somebody is low, let's say like a Wukong, and he tries to bird away from his Anatos, he pops that too. And he's just right behind that Wukong. That bird is not fast enough to keep up with the Thanatos. Very true indeed. There's that Wukong ultimate coming out. Low health bar for Lone Wolf once again, who's now at that two level down mark that you were mentioning earlier. We were talking about the jungler rotations but has at least four stacks on that prophetic and can pick up the round shield. So maybe at a point where you can can hope to kind of live through this Wukong damage. Yeah, I mean, you just, it's tough starting that because you, you, you do want that late game tankiness, but is it really worth it to sacrifice that early game? Sometimes because That prophetic is going to take a long time. Yeah, it definitely is. That was a great dash coming out of Oblua there to dodge the blink that Sniper Glenn was using to try and set up a gank over on that left side. But Chernabog just too safe and unable to find anything from it as support and jungler kind of just stare at each other there in in the jungle but now with rotations coming in they might look to fight jungle jimmy takes a lot of damage the spirit of the nine winds lands just a little bit more is all that's needed and up into the sky goes the thanatos sniper glenn gonna be looking for it and will find the execute great combination of abilities coming out from calder's good boys it's their first kill on the board 12 minutes in yeah just Great vision by Sniper, able to land that ultimate before Thor goes up into the Anvil of Dawn. Great Spirit of the Nine Winds coming out from Green Dragon. And just huge team fight all around. Cataclysm used there, and actually a low health bar for Ral on the Ganesh that they have. A backup coming here for Bodega Hive and Scooby Daddy will get the pick onto the Ganesh. Rotation from both ADCs comes in as Green Dragon gets the return kill onto Scooby Daddy. Anvil at Dawn gonna land, not gonna hit the mark, but it's still a lot of damage onto Sniper Glenn, who needs to be careful. This beacon still not going either direction yet, and oh no! Good Aegis to buy some time here, but that's a world of trouble for Bluey. Jungle Jimmy, though, will get the pick onto T-Pity, but two quick picks in return go the way of Calder's Good Boys. It's Jungle Jimmy versus the world, but Spirit of the Nine Winds deletes him. And now Beacon going to go the way of Calder's Good Boys. I don't know if you saw that. It is unfortunate. Blue went get down mr president for jungle jimmy <laughs> <laughs> and took the thanatos scythe and lost his entire health bar there gonna look towards the gold fury now are the, is this kgb squad scooby daddy is local is aware that it's happening throws out the three space of time early but does a lot of damage to it onto both sniper glenn and a lone wolf but here are more rotations in kgb do manage to pick it up but at the cost of their support's life usually a trade you'd be happy to take scooby daddy takes a lot of damage from that cuckoo one then sniper glenn will clean it up will they decide to still chase here's the chernabog alt libby nightmare gonna land green dragon in a bit of trouble has the beads though and will try to make it out those autos are chunking and it's not quite free and clear yet. Death from above used, and he's re-engaging. Will land on Ben Dizzle and find that kill. Bodega Hive thought they were the ones on the chase, thought they were the ones in control, and they kind of paid for it there. Yeah, that's an absolute win, honestly. They thought everything was all good. Everybody was low. Turns out they weren't. Banks aren't done yet. They're still chasing, but it's Anvil of Dawn from Jungle Jimmy that will find the pick on 2-1. Sniper Glenn falls in trade, and still the team's kind of scrapping a little bit. Over overall, though, I mean, Gold Fury goes the way of Calder's good boys. They get a few good picks. They lose their support and their jungle. Uh, that's worth it for them, right? Yeah, I think that's worth it. They also picked up the solo and the mid off that fight. 
you know, and support lives don't matter, so we can just go ahead and write that off. And so <laughs> they really only lost their jungler there. That was a, a very extended engagement between both of those teams there. It seems like as we shift towards the mid game, they're both both sides are, are very much willing to to fight it out, to scrap it out here for things like these neutral objectives, like the Gold Fury, like the Pyromancer that is available right now. Yeah, we were definitely wrong. We're seeing a lot of action in this early game. Not totally expecting that as we're transitioning into this mid game. Yeah, it feels like we had a slow first maybe five minutes and then we've just been making up for lost time. And we've been talking about this Prophetic a lot that's coming out of Lone Wolf. It's double Prophetic on the side of Calder's Good Boys. It's the first item overall for Rawl on the Ganesh as well, now going into the Thebes. Uh, those auras don't stack. I, it doesn't say anything about not stacking, so they might actually stack. <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot of expended beads and cataclysm coming out to try and find a pick onto Rawl here. Invalid Dawn is up in the air, but will just be used to retreat as death from above will be the same scenario. Pyromancer could be the point of contention. The Ganesh is still low, but the rest of these teams healthy enough to continue the fight. Pyromancer at half HP, another early through space and time. Will they be able to pick it up? They do. Bodega Hive will get credit for that one. But it doesn't look like Lone Wolf is ready to give this up yet. Still in the thick of things here. Still trying to get this fight around. A lot of damage coming out from the Dharmic Pillars, but it's not enough and Lone Wolf will end up falling. Rawl gets sundered and has to back away. That just cleanly went Bodega Hive's way. Yeah, it's a little unfortunate. Lone Wolf wants to get something as a consolation prize for letting them have Pyro. Team wasn't quite ready to re-engage into that. <laughs> All getting engaged upon, but should be safe enough on the Ganesh and will be able to walk away. Something I just noticed, and oh, it's Anvil of Dawn lands. They want the kill on this Ganesh, and Jungle Jimmy will pick it up. He's going to eat a tower shot, and a Spirit of the Nine wins. Green Dragon doesn't miss, and that's another kill onto the Thor. And this Cuckoo is now 3-0-4, level 17. I feel like I blinked, and all of a sudden, they're just absolutely swinging. Yeah, you got to ask yourself if you're that Thor. Was that worth it? <laughs> <laughs> and the Ladon into the uh, Ganesha to die. Hyperglen finds a pick on the support in trade, uses the blink, and seems to have made it safely out of the enemy side of the jungle. Something I was trying to bring up earlier that, that, is, that is really interesting, I kind of love the spiciness of it, it's Hydra's for T Pity on the Jing Wei. Gonna have those Hydra's crits online. Not something you see all too often, but can get some really big chunky numbers. Do you like this this build path for the Jingwei? I will never say no to Hydra's crit. <laughs> uh, Jing Wei, like I said, her entire kit revolves around hitting big crit numbers. So We'll see how it works. I'm not entirely sure. I've never really seen it on a Jingwei. I know I love it on my Mezha. Mm -hmm. But... I don't think it could go too bad. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be interesting. I'm, I'm gonna be paying attention to what kind of numbers you might see coming out of these autos for the Jingwei, but Bodega Hive, they don't care about that right now. They care about this Primal Fury, and there's no one from Call There's Good Boys anywhere nearby to be able to try and contest this. We'll just cleanly go the way of Bodega Hive, putting them up right around 2K or so here at the 19 minute mark. Not enough to be sweating too much if you're the order side team, but you know, it's still something. It's still something that could snowball into more. Yeah, as, as we see here, uh, Bodega Hive's 1K up, but not quite able to take these hyper team fights still i wonder what's going on there i think it might be 1k up in gold but it's the level deficit yeah experience. experiencing 
experience is definitely a, a little more even. And I feel like Green Dragon just keeps hitting these Speed of the Nine wins, keeps hitting these tornadoes, and it's just making these team fights very hard for Bottega Hive. Yeah, very interested to see how these team fights are going to start to play out. Rawl in a bit of trouble here on the Ganesh. Just keeps getting CC'd, uses the Dharmic Pillars. The Speed of the Nine Winds comes through and does a lot of damage in return. And guess who's here? It's Lone Wolf on the Nike. And Lone Wolf will get credit for the kill on to Darth Dumbledore. Jungle Jimmy, though, does get the pick onto the support in trade again, but has a sliver of HP remaining. No Cuckoo Ultimate available to clean him up this time. But I'm not sure about this. Trying to find more damage onto the Jing Wei. The blink in is good and dies to the Order Tower. I'd say that was pretty worth it if you are the jungler of this Bodega Hive team. But this team fight, not completely over yet. They're on the chase. They want more. They want Bluey on this Chernobyl. He uses the Aegis, but it's trouble for Green Dragon as well on the Cuckoo. Has a lot of damage in Sniper Glen. Will find the kill onto the Chernobog. Green Dragon able to do enough to make Vin Dizzle back up. Yeah, I think Lone and Sniper's play there to keep the Chernobog away from your Cuckoo. It, it's an underrated play, but it's definitely would allow them to swing that. This team fight is still kind of going on, by the way. Here's a Spirit of Nine win. First miss we've seen in a while, but the execute was available. There's that interaction you mentioned, though. Nowhere for the Sniper Glen to land. The Wukong able to just heal up and dash away. That's the safety of that solo laner. And it seems like finally things have fizzled over here and left. Yeah, they're taking really long fights. I'm not sure how I feel about this. But sometimes just back up. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it allowed Calder's Good Boys to sneak away a Pyromancer, though, keeping everybody engaged over there on the left lane. So works out for them. And now this gold lead, not even really a thousand between it. I'd say about 800 or so if I can do math live here. So I'm, we're pretty much at a net even game 22 minutes in. Yeah, I mean, you love to see these games. Nobody really gaining an advantage. Nobody gaining a disadvantage. It's just... Who wants it more at this point? 23 minutes in, Fire Giant. Definitely something that is on the table now. Something that both of these teams know if they can get some sort of advantage. They'll be able to go over and take that biggest neutral objective on the map. With both teams having that classic mage secure on either side, who do you give the advantage to if we have like one of these extended Fire Giant dances? Well... If we're talking in terms of securing, Scooby hasn't been on point with that ult yeah. like Green Dragon has. So I think I'm going to have to give it to Calder's Good Boys. They're going to want to be getting their solo laner out right now as Lone Wolf's in a lot of trouble, but a good dash will buy some time. The Spirit of the Nine wins to try and disrupt some, and Lone Wolf will actually get a kill before they end up falling. Green Dragon picks one up as well. So that's two for one so far. Sniper Glen decides not to go too deep with that alt. And it just looks like these teams are going to try and find some sort of positional advantage. At least Calder's good boys are around this fire giant. If they can't, maybe try and pull it. I think a fire giant pull here is a little ambitious. Maybe look for this gold fury first. Get that stage in. Maybe take some towers down. Yeah, that's 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 definitely fair. I like the ambitious plays, but this is definitely the safe call for Calder's good boys. They'll grab the beacon, they'll head over towards that gold fury, start that one up. Deathbringer is online and upgraded as well now for T Pity, keeping an eye on this Jing Wei build. It's gonna start absolutely chunking with that Hydra's online. There is a spectral on the other side for Darth Dumbledore, but is that going to be enough to, to slow down this Jingwei? Um, it'll kind of slow it down, but those Hydra crits are going to hurt. Even still. Think of it like this. You're still going to get hit with a normal crit. 
when that Hydra crit procs, you're just not going to get hit with normal crits all the time. And then T-Pity is also, it's going to be impossible to burn down that, uh, that Geb. Yeah. The way you want to because of Geb's passive on top of the anti-crit already built. Yeah, that is a tanky Geb that Dark Dumbledore is piloting right now as the Ganesh takes a lot of damage. Cataclysm comes out, the shell is used. It's sundered, but the chase is still on. Sniper Glint is here to try and help, but there's an anvil at dawn to slow things down. Lone Wolf jumps over the wall, trying to keep their support alive here. As the Cuckoo Alt comes through, not gonna find a target this time, and Sniper Glint barely making it out with the use of that ultimate running underneath that tier two tower. Good damage, but no kills going either side. Bodega Hive definitely have the numbers advantage to try and push this Titan in the mid lane though. Yeah, I think the right call here is to pressure the Titan and go to fire, which looks like they're, they were planning on doing. See if Galder's good boys can contest this. Fire Giant has been started up by Bodega Hive. The Titan in mid will fall, but the Fire Giant already down to below a quarter HP and no one quite here yet, but here comes the reinforcements and they steal it away. Calder's good boys say thank you very much for the Fire Giant and take that one for themselves. The Anvil of Dawn trying to find something over here. Jungle Jimmy wants revenge for that neutral objective. Sniper Glen is low as fights are continuing elsewhere, but T-Pity with those big boy crits shows up and finds the pick onto the Thor. Lone Wolf trying to catch Scooby Daddy here. One more will seal the deal and they're able to find it. This is absolutely not what Bodega Hive were looking for. They're still in trouble over here on the right side. They have some reinforcements, but it doesn't look like Lone Wolf even cares. Still going in. Yeah, that fire giant just shifted the whole game. Like They were two very even, very similar teams. Oh. Where did they go? Cataclysm though will at least get the pick onto the support, but as you said, support lives do not matter quite as much. And that has exactly still been worth it here for the Calder's good boys. The safety of the Wukong and the safety of the Geb though will allow the two of them to live, but it looks like Calder's good boys, they're gonna push down this tier two. They're gonna continue to be aggressive over here in the right lane and might try to catch out Ben Dizzle. The Scythe off the mark might allow this Wukong to get out, but here comes another Anvil of Dawn and it's a lot of damage. Sniper Glenn falls and Jungle Jimmy punishes maybe an overstay from Calder's good boys here as they now decide to retreat back into the jungle. Yeah, it, everything was all good. You only lost fire off your Ganesha and then they just kind of overstayed their welcome. Definitely want to go for these other towers before trying to drop a Phoenix. Still might be in trouble as the chase is on now from Bodega Hive, everything needing to be used by T Pity here to try and make it out still has the relics at least. But having that to just use the whole kit to make it out of here. Lone Wolf doesn't even look like they took damage. They were in the thick of that. Spirit of the Nine Winds. I'm gonna cast her cursed green dragon talking about how they weren't missing, not quite have having the same luck as before, but the rest of the squad does manage to make it out from the chase. We also got to think about how Green Dragon was hitting the Spirit of the Nine Winds before people were panicking, deep in engagement, uh, sometimes not even looking at Green Dragon. Now he's, they're fully alert, easy sidestep for that old. Not really going to find too much. It was quite the swing in favor of Calder's good boys. This Primal Fury might add to it should they be able to confirm it, and they do. But here's another of Anvil of Dawn. Watch where Jungle Jimmy was looking to land. Doesn't look like he's going to have the range and will not. Just have to back up. So big ultimate down on the side of Bodega Hive. But that gold lead is now 8k. It was even what feels like, I don't know, three, four, five minutes ago. Now. 7k in the lead are Calder's good boys pulling themselves quite a bit far ahead of their opponents right now. Yeah, these fights over the uh, jungle objectives are huge. They're 
so essential to switching a game up, making a game that was once even turn into what looks like an absolute run over. Definitely feeling better and better for this College Good Boys squad as they head towards the T1 tower in mid. No real defense coming out of Bodega Hive. Don't imagine we'll see too much of a defense on this tier two either. They could look to try and slow down the siege here from Calder's Good Boys. And they actually show up with enough numbers that it seems like KGB are just fine backing away. They got the tier one and they are good. The next fire giant that spawns in 50 seconds will be enhanced. It's going to be all the more important for both of these teams to pick up. That Chernobog just doing Chernobog things. Dying? Is that, is that yes. Chernobog things? Louis, Dying, Wally. but he did, he did take that T2 and cracked open the Phoenix. True. More skirmishing in the jungle. These teams, they, they, they started fighting and they just haven't stopped now. Scooby Daddy in a lot of trouble. The tornado's gonna tick, tick, tick away. The stone shield is good, but not good enough. And that is a death, another death for the Giannis there in the jungle. Dark double Dumbledore kill. gonna die for the team as well. And Green Dragon finds a double kill there. That could open up the door for this fire that's due to respawn in just two seconds. As I mentioned before, gonna be enhanced. And it's really only Jungle Jimmy that's nearby unless Bendizzle can teleport into this somewhere. Fire Giant getting burned down by the big crits coming out of T-Pity, the damage coming out of Green Dragon. It is very low and it is easily secured by Calder's Good Boys. Now five strong with EFG. Uh, that's not a situation you want to be in if you're Bodega Hive. You've got this cuckoo who's absolutely reaming your team with that tornado right now. And T Pity hitting these massive crits. Now they have EFG. Definitely a dangerous situation for Bodega Hive. A dangerous situation for the Ganesh, but the slow into the cuckoo alt is enough again. And Green Dragon will get credit for yet another kill on this Cuckoo. 7 0 oh, 6 from the mid lane right now. Absolutely putting in work on this pit. Thor had a health bar there? I don't know. I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Jungle Jimmy's gonna have uh, nightmares about Spirit of the Nine Winds after this this game is over. I, I feel like so many times has fallen or at least dropped to a sliver of HP from that, that ultimate ability. Oh, I thought they were gonna back up. Lone Wolf blinks in under the Phoenix here. Sorry to cut you off. He wants to find something, but no one else is really there. The Nike will barely make it out. Cypherglen was there, though, and we'll find a pick onto Scooby Daddy. But can you make it out? The Spirit of the Nine Winds lands onto Bendizzle, and with the help of Sniper Glen, it's another kill for the Cuckoo. T Pity dives under the tower and gets a pick onto Obluo. They have a Runic Bomb, and the Phoenix is just gone. But here's Jungle oh, Jimmy. He gets one before immediately getting getting dropped by the Jingwei double kill now for T Pity and they're just walking up towards the throne room. It's just the Geb standing away of their victory. They have four strong here and they are burning down this Titan already around half HP and absolutely deleting nothing Darth Dumbledore can do. And game one goes the way of Calder's good boys. That Cuckoo was absolutely essential to their victory there. I mean, there's there's no way you can look at it any other way. That Spirit of the Nine wins on Ben. I feel like Sniper should die there. Yeah. You know, he dived into five people or four people in the Phoenix, started taking shots. That Spirit of the Nine wins isn't there. Sniper dies there, and that fight is a whole different story. Look at the damage that Green Dragon put out. 46k, next highest in the lobby, was Ben Dizzle with 21k. Absolutely just demolishing health bars out there in game one. Yeah, I just... <laughs> Cuckoo diff, you know, tornado, spirit yeah. of nine wins. <laughs> 
it's it's a little much. I, I mean, if you're a bodega hive, you have to ban that, right? You ban it, pick it up, you know. Do Anything. something. Make sure <laughs> make sure he can't get that pick again. Yeah, Green Dragon showing that there needs to be a targeted ban thrown their direction. We'll find out how picks and bans go for game number two, what Bodega Hive can do to answer back to what happened in that late game in just a few moments. We'll be right back here on Frank's Retirement Home. Welcome back, everybody, to Frank's Retirement Home. Still in that Walker Division matchup between Bodega Hive and Calder's Good Boys. If you missed game one, a semi-slow early to mid game and then a stolen fire giant leads to Calder's Good Boys just kind of running the map. Now Bodega Hive looking to answer back and already we see a target ban coming out. Thanatos not going to be in game two. I can see it. I definitely probably would prefer to see that cuckoo ban though. I mean that cuckoo. <laughs> <laughs> Doubled almost everybody, or actually, yeah, did double <laughs> everybody's damage. <laughs> there it is. Stacking Bane yeah. overall going to take away the Cuckoo from Green Dragon, who just looked so good. I mean, Sniper Glenn looked really good on the Thanatos as well, and they were combining to just absolutely delete people. So I, I don't mind both of those bands. Athena going to round out their three bands for the first phase, while on the other side, Bastet and Ravana taken off the board. No matter what the last ban here for Calder's Good Boys is, there's a lot left on the table. Bodega Hive will get their first pick of what's left available, but then it's going to be able to have two answers back on the other side. I mean, what is worthy of that that first pick kind of position here? Um. Well, you've got Chernabog open. Mm -hmm. That's always a nice first pick, but they opt for the rat. That's not bad either. Yeah, Ranatoskar feels really good right now, and I, based on what we saw on the Thor for Jungle Jimmy, I imagine Ranatoskar going to be much of the same. Lots of semi-global presence, dunking down, and just deleting people. So looking forward to that. But, you know, the Chernabog that you mentioned, still up and available. The Ganesh we saw from Game 1, still available. That could get locked in as kind of an answer back here for Calder's Good Boys. And, you know, those those solo laners that we saw, the Wukong and the Nike, both available as well. And, you know, they could block in things that I didn't even mention. Uh, they could yeah. just completely disregard <laughs> all the points I was making and lock in Pele Poseidon instead. Is this Poseidon mid, or is this Poseidon solo? What do you think? Um, Mage solos are out. They're, <laughs> they're done. They're out for the count. Definitely would be very sad to see a Poseidon solo come out because it's it's a waste he's so much better in mid right now yeah that makes me sad i i'm a like a mid player at heart so being able to like flex into solo while made solos was a thing felt really nice if it's if it's truly gone i'm a little sad but poseidon mid definitely always you know it's just a classic pick pair that up with the burst from the pele i like the top two from Calder's Good Boys here. The Ganesh is going to be the answer, though, going to give that over to Darth Dumbledore this time, taking it away from what Calder's had in game one. Yeah, ready. Really excited to see this. You never want to be a Pele going into a Ganesh, and now a Fenrir. Looks like that's going to be the solo lane. Do you think Fenrir solo over Rat solo? I think so. I th mm, yeah, I think so. You definitely want a rat in your jungle more than a Fenrir. Unless that's what you're building your team for. You need that anti-dive kind of presence. I'm interested to see which way it goes because uh, both have the ability to flex into those positions. And, and I'm looking forward to see which direction they decide to take it. Lone Wolf going to pick up the Sun Wukong instead of Ben Dizzle this time, and not opting to grab that Nike, instead wanting the safety and the damage that comes from a Wukong as the second phase of bans gets underway here. Charon is the ban on the side of Bodega Hive, while Raijin 
gets a ban yet again here in game two. Now, you don't see him too much anymore, but I feel like the best warrior right now to bring into the solo lane is Achilles. I feel like Achilles has been completely forgotten about. Yeah, I mean you can't you can't really go wrong with an execute that can that can chain that can that can continue to get through the team plus the CC the setup. I li I like an Achilles. It could be a good choice. I don't think Calder's Good Boys got the memo that Mage Solos are not a thing anymore, though, as uh, they ban away the Raijin and the Morgan Le Fay, who, unless those are those are mid bans, those you know to me are the the solo mage bans. Raijin and Morgan Le Fay are still strong in mid lane, though. I mean, you can't you can't count them out. Huge tick damage coming out of Raijin and just ungodly amounts of self peel from both of them. <laughs> Very, very true. TPD going to pick up the Jingwei again. I wonder if we'll see another Hydra's crit build because it was working once we got to late game, which is just exactly what Jingwei wants to have happen. So they'll round out their top four with that pick. Now we get to see what Bodega Hive are going to finish out their draft with. Still looking for a mid and an ADC, you would imagine. <laughs> Hachiman's going to be the hover here. Now on the Jingwei... I think I'd like to see him sneak a little bit more attack speed into the build. You know, you're getting your attack speed from your support Shogun. Like, that's all the attack speed Jingwei had. <laughs> does Dominance give attack speed? It does, right? Yeah, it, it gives a little. It yeah, that was the last item, item build. Oh, okay. There's a little bit more. This this uh, Bodega Hive team taking their time for, for rounding out their draft. Anchiman hovered still. Now the Toad <laughs> is going to get hovered and then locked in, and they will lock in the Hachi as well. This, to me right here, is, is a combo that we're going to have to keep our eyes on. Regardless of it, where this Fenrir goes, if they get someone gets picked up by that ultimate and then hit by the final judgment, I, I mean, you're just going to be dead unless you are, like, the support on the side of Calder's Good Boys. But the final judgment also has to go through Poseidon and Pele. I'm not sure I like this stuff, pick. You know, yeah. Poseidon cripples you in that whirlpool, you just get Pele diffed. Yeah, gonna need a lot of good positioning coming out of Scooby Daddy here to play safe in that mid lane. The the Kuzumbo was locked in for the support there at the end. We didn't get a chance to talk about it quite yet. Not a pick I really expected to see. Well, I love Kuzumbo. Uh, how do you feel about him currently, especially paired up with T Pity on the string way? I hate Kuzumbo. I hate him so much, <laughs> but for good reasons. <laughs> he is an amazing support. If you're a jungler, you hate seeing a Kuzumbo because you're just like, okay. Well, I'm never getting into their back line ever again. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, this is a game that Calder's Good Boy is going to have to play front to back. You know, you can't be a Pele and be like, hey, I'm going to go dive the back line. Kuzumbo is just going to knock you up endlessly, push you away, do everything you don't want to happen as a Pele. Well, Sniper Glen gonna ha is going to have the help of the Kuzumbo on, on their side to maybe get into the back line on the other side. Oh, but the, Ganesh... the Kuzumbo is on Calder's Wood Boys. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. That's what you want. That's what you want as a Calder's Good Boy player. <laughs> yeah. And then you've I... got... Where is Rat going again? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I we have some spoilers for the stream that can't quite see yet. Ranatosker going into the solo lane in the hands of Ben Dizzle. Yeah, so I think the Fenrir into the jungle here, I think that might have been a last choice decision, maybe, when they seen the Kuzumbo lock. Instead of going dive heavy with the rat in the jungle, they're going to play more counter engage. Yeah. I mean, that's the flexibility that locking in a rat and a Fenrir early like that provides you. You can kind of put them wherever, wherever you see fit once you can get a little bit more information 
on the other side, it's it's going to be interesting to see how they want to play it. Is it counter engage? Is it is it just who cares about the Kuzumbo? We're going to dive anyway. I don't know. Looking at these uh, early builds, though, Wukong, where's your pots, buddy? <laughs> oh wow. And pots it's... opting for that prophetic cloak again. You exactly. Know, maybe, maybe the safety of Wukong will help it work this time, but still don't still don't enjoy it in the solo lane. Yeah, it might just it seems like just something that Lone Wolf likes to build and I did not Wukong's not the god that I think of when I think of prophetic, but you know, with with already how safe Wukong can be, you add a, a fully stacked prophetic, it's gonna be so hard to kill kill Lone Wolf in the late game. I agree though, I don't understand why there's no uh no pots picked up though by uh by Lone Wolf. I'm sure that there was enough gold available. Yeah, I mean no pots over in the solo lane. Just give up your early game at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's not going to be much you can do. You're just going to get poked out under tower. Have to teleport early. Green Dragon going for a bit of a different build. Uh, here, at least in the beginning on the Poseidon, it is the Sands of Time. But going into the flat pen tree right off the bat, not opting for that Book of Toth that we see so often right now. Does that signal like maybe early aggression, you think? or what they want to do with this Poseidon to get that flat pen early? I'm actually not sure. I mean, the flat pen, it's all right and everything. Getting it, uh, getting it out, getting everything ready. But you're sacrificing that damage that comes out of Book of Thoth. I don't know if that's what you want to do. Yeah, it's going to be, it's a little bit cooking here for uh for green dragon as jungle jimmy makes an early rotation will step on a ward but ben dizzle will find first blood again here in game number two lone wolf falls on this wukong maybe pots would have been a little helpful there now we see them picked up and now now he has some pots <laughs> Oh, ben Dizzle in a lot of trouble though. This Pele does a lot of damage, but can Sniper Glen find the kill? It doesn't look like it. The Rad Tosker will live with a sliver of HP and just reset. Has that TP up and available. No, I mean if you're Lone Wolf, you don't you don't feel too bad anymore. You know, you just You died, yes, but you're solo lane or you're your, yeah, your solo lane counterpart just got reset too, so. Yeah, not the end of the world at all. Gonna feel nice for Ben Dizzle to have that little bounty bonus from the first blood, but otherwise not too big of a deal. Saw an attempt at some aggression over in the mid lane by Jungle Jimmy, but unable to find anything. That Whirlpool, the Cripple Field, interrupts that... Uh, that Fenrir damage as well, that's something that we're going to have to keep an eye on as this game gets further and further. Yep. Fenrir has two movement abilities that so are damage, and then his other one's just a stem, so playing that into Poseidon really isn't too friendly either. Sniper Glenn on this Pele. We already saw aggression in the solo lane. Pele was absolutely at the top of everything meta a few patches ago and has gotten a little bit quieter, but I think I think she still does a lot of damage. Uh, where do you want to see Sniper Glenn kind of use that, that damage here in the early game the most? Uh, I would definitely like to see it come out in this mid lane to duo lane more. You know, you've got a... A Hashi man who can't dash away. You've got a, or no, he, he can't dash away. You've got a Thos who can't dash away. If you got that Poseidon whirlpool on him, force him to use beads, do anything else, and then Poseidon whirlpool into Kraken could just be finished for this Thos. And you got that Hachiman, you know, he can dash away, but how far is he going to get if you're with Volcanic Lightning right after him? 
Yeah, very true. That would good targets for this Paley to try and look for things. But on the other side, Jungle Jimmy's wanting to find things in the mid lane and will get credit for the kill onto Green Dragon. And they're looking for more. The Ragnarok comes out and picks up Sniper Glenn, who has to use that ultimate to disengage. Ben Dizzle's up in the air, was looking to try and continue the chase, but unable to get there quite quick enough. But still, another pick going the way of Bodega Hive. This feels a lot like game one. Bodega Hive are finding the early kills. You know, kind of a slow and steady wins the race kind of pace. Lone Wolf needs to be a little careful. Rotation over here and already low on HP. Lone Wolf will fall for the second time. This is just game one repeated with some different gods. Mm-hmm. Although most of the most of the picks in game one were kind of congested over in solo lane. We're seeing them spread out a little bit more for Bodega Hive. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's still, still two deaths for Lone Wolf, but they're getting that pick in the mid lane, putting Green Dragon, who did so much work in game one, at least a little bit behind, is always gonna feel good. Still able to keep up in levels for the moment, but it's never a bad thing to get a pick on that mid laner. Yeah, I always love to see a mid laner fall, especially when you're a jungler, you know. <laughs> I'm a mid player, so I don't normally like that, but I, I from this zoomed out view, I totally agree. <laughs> Prophetics online. It is actually really hard to gank this mid laner anymore because the towers are just so close to each other. Mm -hmm. And the lane is so wide. It's definitely a lot safer mm -hmm. than it has been on previous maps. Prophetics online for both the solo laner and the support again for Calder's good boys sticking to that plan of, of doubling up on that late game stacking defensive item and it's double flat pin here for Green Dragon went with the uh, the Deso first overall and heading right back into that tree really wanting to shred the protections of these squishies in the early game. But over here in left lane, Jungle Jimmy might be looking for something onto T-Pity, who's well aware of it. Good use of the one and the dash to just completely negate any aggression Jungle Jimmy would have been looking for. Yeah, that was really good play coming out of the Jingwei. Now, I don't really like Jingwei. Personally, I feel like she's an easy gank. But... Not right next to her tower line, obviously. <laughs> yes. I thought maybe for just a second we might see an alt on the mid harpies again, since this game has kind of been mirroring game one a little bit, but it will just cleanly go the way of Calder's good boys. Gold, though, is in favor of Bodega Hive with their kills. Not by a ton, not by too much to be worried about, but 900 is still 900 at the end of the day, especially seven minutes in. But here comes Jungle Jimmy in the mid lane. Looks like Calder's good boys are aware of it though, and we'll just back up underneath their tower and just return to farming. Yeah, I definitely want to see a slow start coming out of Calder's good boys. Not so much from this Pele though. I feel like Pele should have a lot more early aggression than this Fenrir. Yeah, has the Jotuns online, so has that 20% CDR, good amount of power. I, I think I agree. We could. I, I'd want to see Sniper Glenn getting a little bit more aggressive, at least in some lane. But it is right now at the purple buff and could get in a little skirmish with Jungle Jimmy. They spot each other out. Both the ADCs just content to continue to clear minions. And the junglers will just walk away, not taking, not taking that fight at the purple buff. Let's see if you sniper there, you want to press that. Uh, Jungle Jimmy is miles away from any safety. Lone Wolf and will shoot. use the ultimate to get out of that one, but no real, no real damage over there. Did not mean to, uh, didn't mean to cut y'all. But yeah, we got Pele into a Fenrir. You definitely want to see a little bit more aggression in that fight. You know, Pele, or Fenrir brutalizes you, you just start throwing your damage out at him, and then he has to run away. 
attempted purple buff invade not gonna be successful for O blue o there we'll just back away there was a good rotation from sniper going to make sure that goes the way and we might see some paleo aggression now onto the hachiman dashes away from the knockup no further chases the kraken comes out on the other side of the map green dragon lives with a sliver of hp but will manage to make it away kraken down but has 20 percent cdr so it shouldn't be too long before that comes back up the beads though that's another 150 seconds for that layer of safety is going to be up and available now something a little interesting the rat opted for the five acorn oh lone wolf gonna be in trouble might feel the damage of that five acorn and jungle jimmy will get credit for the kill onto lone wolf who falls for the third time this game but after what we saw in game one i don't know if lone wolf minds too much it seems like they definitely have a a late game focused mindset yeah and then playing sun wukong into a rat is pretty hard anyway you get those extra protections when you're low but to a rat that doesn't mean anything he's just saying thank you for the extra protections <laughs> Yeah, do you like the, the Thistlethorn pickup here for, for Ben Dizzle, or would you want it to see the uh, the kind of double spin acorn instead, yeah. or even the green one? I think the double flurry acorn is the best pickup for Rat Solo. Because, you know, you get all that protection shred. The five acorns nice in the jungle. But you get a little sustain off the double flurry. You get protection shred on top of you gain protections for the protections that you shred off. Yeah, it seems like Bendizzle looking for some extra damage instead. Jungle Jimmy trying to get aggressive in the left lane once again, but just can't quite get on top of T Pity. But now there's four members over here. Fenrir needs to be careful, but has spotted out at least two of the four that shield buff is looking to get a little more aggressive with the help of obluo they will stand on that ward but the hodgemon is going to come out they want this kill they're diving underneath the tower jungle jimmy will pick it up uses the ultimate to get away from sniper glenn now is on the run but the rest of the team is stuck under the tower it's just raw trying to get out and scooby daddy will get credit for that when jungle jimmy is able to walk away uses the blink to make sure Oh no, excuse me, that was a blink from the Pele, but Jungle Jimmy's still able to make it out of there. Yep, it's got that two levels. On this on this Pele, he's moving so much faster. Definitely need to get some Pele levels. You know, if if Fenrir is outrunning you while you have your three on, something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Beacon gonna go the way of Vodega Hive. Pick that up for themselves. And the gold lead, kinda out of nowhere, is 4k. Maybe three, three and a half, three, three, 3300 to be exact in favor of Bodega Hive as they pick up that neutral objective for themselves. Didn't decide to go straight to Gold Fury. And, you know, on the topic of neutral objectives, it's Kraken versus Final Judgment this time. Is there a a winner in that trade, or does it kind of just end up being even again? Um, I think Final Judgment kind of pulls out ahead of that one. It's an ability you could just hold there, right? You can just hold on to it and wait for the right moment to fire it. It's kind of like E-Set Secure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree, especially with Book of Toth being fully stacked. It's going to be a lot of power on that ultimate one on the other side. It's still just the double flat pen online for Green Dragon. I'm really interested to see where they end up going for their third item because uh, I, I feel like flat pen's definitely online now. You kind of want something a little different, right? Uh, yeah, you definitely need some percentage pen, maybe some more damage coming out of this Poseidon, you know, like, like I said, you don't have that damage to really make your Kraken, Kraken, like, <laughs> <laughs> you 
you've got all this pin, but where's the damage to back it up at this point? You're a level ahead, which is nice. Fourteen minutes in, it's six to zero in terms of kills favoring that Bottega Hive here. They've just been able to to find the picks that they want. Jungle Jimmy's looking to set up yet another one. T Pity could be in a lot of trouble. There's the dash already used, but has the ultimate to immune out the Ragnarok. Jungle Jimmy unable to get the chase underneath the tier two tower, but T Pity's just been under constant pressure over here. Look at those Hachiman chunking autos over there. T Pity. Barely able to stay safe underneath the tier two. Jungle Jimmy will get popped by the Kraken. Green Dragon saying, I have the build to make the Kraken crack and it proves us wrong. But now a lot of rotations over here in the left lane could be trouble for Obluo, who gets stunned, has to use the beads and the Aegis, but has the support of Darth Dumbledore to try and make it out. Still fairly healthy and great peel coming out of the Ganesh right here. Oh, Blue O didn't even take too much damage, did have to use both relics, but is able to walk away freely. Yeah, I mean, that's a win. You know, both relics, yeah, kind of sucks that you're not going to have those for a while, but you didn't die there, and that's what really counts, because that was looking very dangerous for Blue. Recognizes that and uses both of his relics. Gets out with hardly any damage. Can still fight the lane. Tanks just slapping each other over here in the near the mid lane. Beacon's not even up, and just fighting for fighting sake. Maybe trying to find an advantage for this gold here. Usually, when you see the solo laners both rotate over, looking for something like that. But either team really pressuring that left side too hard. We're just kind of staring at each other in mid lane right now. I don't know, Lone Wolf's exhibiting that warrior mind. I see enemy, I hit enemy. Like, <laughs> you need those prophetic stacks, right? Yeah, you gotta get those prophetic stacks. Well, we're 16 minutes into this game now, edging towards that late game out of the early game. Is there a, a team that kind of has a clear advantage once we get to that true late game point between these two? Well, Bodega Hive definitely expanded their gold lead this time more than game one. They're about 4k up and some change. We're gonna see a little bit more pressure coming out of Bodega Hive, pressing these uh, mid-game uh, objective fights. Scooby Daddy just letting everybody know Final Judgment is up and available. Charging it in the mid lane there as Pyromancer is started by Bodega Hive. Gonna burn that one down. There might be some sort of contest coming out, but I don't know if anybody's gonna make that time. The Kappa unable to steal that away, and Bodega Hive will get the first Pyromancer of the game. On the left side, though, a Blue O could be in trouble as Poseidon is making a rotation over towards that side of the map, trying to find some sort of pick. Mounted Archery, though, pretty good ability. A Blue was able to just gallop on out of there. I hate horses. <laughs> Guan Yu, Lancelot, Hachiman, get these horses out of here, okay? Only horse I don't mind is Chiron. <laughs> It's only half a horse, so I, I can see that. I can see that. It's yeah. Primal Fury, or Gold Fury, excuse me. Started up, but will be dropped by Bodega Hive. They're playing it safe, as all 10 members in the lobby are over here around this Fury, 18 minutes in. Neither team wants to give this one up for free. Back coming out from Ben Dizzle. Does have the teleport, does not have the teleport, excuse me. And it, Bodega Hive not really posturing around this Fury anymore. Yeah, I probably don't want to take the fight into, you know, a Kraken that's still up, a Pele who's going to come into your back line. Yeah, we yeah. don't, it's not often you see 10 members group around of objective just for both sides to be like, you know what, never mind, bye. And they just all separate across the map again. Yeah, especially with how game one went when they were so focused on fighting, just wanting to fight all the time. 
is is that an advantage for Calder's Good Boys then, giving them time to try and catch themselves back up into this game, or is, is Bodega Hive? Do they have them right where they want them? Uh, I'm not sure. I think uh, you've got this Hachiman and Ganesha just sitting in the jungle, not getting any XP whatsoever. Just kind of standing around this Gold Fury, but also. Same thing on the other side. Everybody's just kind of standing around, not getting any XP. It's kind of like stalemated right now. I feel like Bodega Hive can press a little more than they think. Vizzle's in the background trying to make some space while the Fury is started up once again, so they might agree with you. Jungle Jimmy jumps into the back, gets the ultimate out from the Wukong as Lone Wolf faces back forward fury has been leashed once again in favor of the fight and here it comes through the cosmos for bendizzle looking to find some sort of engagement but it's just calder's good boys completely backing up not wanting any part of this fight we'll just be able to get away from the ratatosker ultimate still just dancing around this gold here i mean come on it's just a gold fury guys <laughs> Yeah, at 20 minutes. Not even. It's not even, not even that crazy. Or yeah. It's just a normal Gold Fury. It's still the first Gold Fury of the game. No one's picked that one qu up quite yet. And both these teams definitely seem to want it. They're going to get aggressive onto Lone Wolf, who can just turn into a bird and dash away. Fury, I thought, might have been started up for a second there, but neither team seems to have the confidence. To pull this neutral objective. Yeah, kind of strange, strange actions coming out of both teams here. <laughs> Just kind of grabbing their farm and then going to dance around this gold fury. Hydra's has been picked up again for T Pity here, going for the same build as in game one, heading into the Deathbringer ne next, but a double stun coming out of jungle, Jimmy. Except Lone Wolf is able to head up onto the Somersault Cloud and just jump over the wall. Darmic Pillars was used. That's a short enough cooldown. You don't feel too bad about it. And Green Dragon fast enough to just walk away from the Fenrir. Still no real blood spilt in quite some time. With the exception of that T1 tower in mid that just falls to the pressure of Bodega Hive. Yeah, Bodega Hive definitely just has so much pressure right now. Pele wasn't able to get too active in the early game. It's just kind of, it's not really behind, but not really ahead either, like you want to be on a Pele. Well, Bodega Hive say, we're tired of waiting around for objectives. They walk over and they grab the Pyromancer without any contest coming from Calder's Good Boys, who instead are on this Gold Fury now. They're finally going to start and try and get it, but Bodega Hive steal it away. And Ben Dizzle finds a pick. Scooby Daddy grabs another one. And Calder's Good Boys lose out on two neutral objectives and two kills. Yeah, that, that really hurts for Calder's Good Boys now. Now that gold lead is really starting to open up. You're going to see lots of level leads, lots of gold, or lots of item leads. That appears to be the go button for this FG, though. Yeah, immediately starting it up here using the Dharma Pillars to try and burn it down that much quicker. And they are burning it fairly quick. Bendizzle on the zone to try and keep anyone away from getting in as well as Jungle Jimmy on the zone on the back, and the Fire Giant's low, and Bodega Hive will be able to pick it up. Keep Hitty and Green Dragon were trying to get in there, but unable to find that, and the dash away there from Sniper Glen had to get out. We'll live with a sliver of HP. Now the aggression turns towards the Kuzumbo, who has the Watery Grave, and will just spin to win away from the members of Bodega Hive, but still, Got Fire Giant, didn't lose anybody. That gold lead now getting closer and closer to that 10k mark where things just become so hard if you're behind. This is really going Bodega Hive's way. Yeah, they're doing... They took that game one and they were like, okay. We know what we need to do. Obviously Calder's Good Boys doesn't have that so good cuckoo that they had. <laughs> In that game one. 
Yeah, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it feels like Green Dragon and Sniper Glen aren't on the picks they were on in game one, and they just, it's like they're playing completely differently. We saw absolute aggression and dominance coming out of them in the first game, and in this one, I mean, Sniper Glen is 0 and 0 24 minutes into the game. Yeah, probably just not as comfortable on these picks, I would have to say. I mean, another thing to point out, 24 minutes into the game, Sniper Glenn has 400 more damage than Ganesha. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that just can't feel good to have your jungler at the bottom of the damage charts like that. I don't feel like that really speaks to, to how this game has been going so far for Calder's Good Boys. And now with the Titans unleashed, and already Bodega Hive putting pressure over here on this left lane. Uh, how's the Siege defense for Calder's Good Boys? Because I feel like that's kind of the point we're at right now. They have a decent Siege defense, you know? Definitely hard to push into a twos and bow that you know, you get caught out with, you might end up with a Kraken in your face. That looks like they might try to actually defend this T2, really slowing down the Siege attempt as Final Judgment comes out and does a lot of damage, doesn't find a kill, but both backliners now very low. Darmic Pillars comes out as well as the tower. It will end up falling here very low. Jungle Jimmy's in the back. Jungle Jimmy gets a pick onto Green Dragon, and that's the go button. Now help bar starting to deplete quickly for Calder's good boys. Somersault Cloud is good to buy some time, to buy some space for Lone Wolf. T Pity will live with a sliver of HP, as will Rawl. And you're just not going to catch the Sun Wukong, except for Jungle Jimmy, who might have, but needs to be careful, is very low. But look at the sustain. The shell is good. And that's another pick for the Fenrir now. Six, one, and two in the jungle. And Primal Fury shows up just in time for them to be able to take that as well. I, th I think Lone Wolf does his job there. You know, he takes three people back with him. They don't grab that Phoenix, although that Phoenix looks like it may fall here now. Oh, Blue's going to back away. Scared of those uh, Jingwei crits that are coming out. Ben Dizzle's here too, but it looks like, yeah, they're just gonna take what they got, unable to crack the base fully, but they're still just extending that gold lead more and more over the 10k mark now. I'd say right around 16? I don't know. Don't do math live on cast. I can't even. What are numbers? What are numbers? They're up a lot. They're up a lot. Yeah, 13 or 14k ahead. <laughs> Thanks for saving me on that one. Yeah, 15. Hey, I was only a thousand off by the end of it. We'll take that. We take that. The one number we did it say 13, 14, 16. Yeah. <laughs> of course it was the one we didn't say. I, I mean, what do you do if you're called there's good boys here? This this much down 27 minutes in. Uh, you, you still have all phoenixes up, but it feels like fights just aren't going your way. What's the game plan here? You got a turtle. Turtle up. You've got a turtle on your team. Use that turtle in your defense. <laughs> <sighs> T-Pity has to use the ultimate to get away from the pressure of Ben Dizzle. Uh, this next Fire Giant's gonna spawn in five seconds, but in two minutes it will become enhanced. I don't think Bodega Hive is gonna wait that two minutes though. They're just gonna take this regular fire giant for themselves committing at the dharmic pillars look where green dragon is deep behind enemy lines here could try to sneak around and get a cheeky kraken steal attempt from the fire giant already so low it was too late and jungle jimmy will get the kill onto sniper glenn to add salt to the wound of that second fire giant going the way of bodega hive they're not done yet, though. Obluo has to use the Aegis to try and get out mounted. Archery, again, is a good ability. 
and will be able to dash safely away from Lone Wolf. So Fire Giant around the waist of all five members again, while Ben Dizzle is just on the split push over here, but has the help of Jungle Jimmy. They're going in. Blink underneath the Phoenix. They have a Runic Bomb. They have the left side bird. I might have spoke too soon. They do. They get it. T-Pity has to use the Aegis to try and get away from the damage. Ben Dizzle gets the knockup, gets the stun, but can't find the rest of the damage. The dash gets interrupted, and this could be trouble for the Ratatosker. Trying to make it out of here. The doors will open, and the dash is good. And look, the team has appeared, but it's not enough. It's not enough, and Lone Wolf will at least get one traded back for everything Bodega Hive got just there. <laughs> Yeah, that left bird, oh, you hate to see it, Culver's good boy, now your base is cracked. They still have Fire Giant on, they're looking at this mid bird. You just really have to play this defense super hard. Poseidon, I think, takes a little longer route than he may, he probably should have there. To get that steal on the Fire Giant. Yeah, just a little bit too late. Wasn't able to get into range quick enough to make that steal attempt happen, which means Bodega Hive continue to push this gold lead. And the further we get into this game, the less that gold lead matters. But if you look at the items on the side of Calder's Good Boys, it's definitely still mattering. Everybody's still having recipes. Some people not even, you know, finished the item before the recipe. There's a, a clear advantage for Bodega Hive here. Yeah, I mean, you're... I'm not gonna do math on stream again, but they're they're ahead. They're ahead by a lot, <laughs> and they're gonna continue to get ahead with these uh, neutral objectives. They keep picking them up. Now they're 16, almost 17k ahead. About to break into that 20k gold difference. Yeah, that just makes it so hard to do anything. If you're called, there's good boys. I I feel like. <laughs> I mean, is there a world where if you're called as good boys, your your mind is now going towards game three? Because yeah, this feels this feels almost insurmountable. It's not impossible, but it's going to be very hard for them. Yeah, I think you're thinking about game three right now. You're you're still doing your best in this game, but at this point, yeah, you're you're thinking about game three. What is what's causing us problems in this game? Well, for all, it was the entire team. Oh, Blue will get credit for the final hit there, but that was just a 4v1 in the mid lane. Nothing the support could do, and now they're stepping in towards the mid Phoenix. Where did it go? It's just gone. Where did Sniper Glenn go? Scooby Daddy gets a double kill with the final judgment there, and that is very, very problematic for Calder's Good Boys. They are down three. It is T Pity and Lone Wolf versus the world to try and save this game, but the Titan is already below a quarter HP. The Titan is sure to fall here, and it does. And that is game two going the way of Bodega Hive, pushing us to a game three. Yeah, just really rough if you're Calder's Good Boys. Uh... They they got a little bit of a lead in that early game. We were able to push it in the mid game into that insurmountable lead that we saw in that late game. That Fenrir was putting in work on everybody. Yeah, yeah. Jungle Jimmy looked definitely good on that pick there. Was seven, one, and six by the time the game ended. That was just Bodega Hive really answering back to what happened in game one. And now, at game three, we've seen both teams get quite the lead as we get towards the mid and late game. It's still been even fairly in the early game. I mean, what is there anything that kind of jumps out you want to see shift up for either of these teams to try and get themselves the set win? Uh, we definitely need Sniper to be more active in that early to mid game. I mean, you can't 32 minute game go almost 5,000 damage. Oh, I didn't see that. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah, you know, everybody's had games like that. I, I, Sniper Glenn can shake it off, try to head into game three and turn things around. We'll find out 
what happens in just a few moments. Stay tuned and don't go anywhere here on Frank's Retirement Home. Welcome back, everybody, to Game 3 here in this Walker Division matchup on Frank's Retirement Home between Bodega Hive and Calder's Good Boys. Calder's Good Boys took Game 1, but Bodega Hive answered back with a convincing late-game lead and win in Game number 2. Heading into Game 3, I'm still Dr. Shrew, joined by Iso with Wolfie Pup on The Spectator. And bands coming through, we're already seeing shifts from what we saw in the previous two games, that Fenrir getting banned away, and again, the Thanatos and the Cuckoo taken off the board. Yeah, really just do not want to see that those two together for Bodega Hive again. Um, yeah, game one, pretty even until... Calder's good boy, take it away. Uh, game two, not a lot of early presence coming out of Calder's good boys allows Bodega Hive to just run with it. I'm really excited to see game three. I wonder what changes they're going to make in their drafts and their early game plan. Notably, this game three. This Athena is still available. It is banned away in both game one and two. Now is open and available for this order side team. Should they choose to pick that up, they're going to opt for the Ganesh instead, really prioritizing the elephant that they got in game one. Leaves Athena Ravana open on the other side. I feel like that's a pretty scary top two to lock in if you're Bodega Hive. Yeah, you've got that Athena. I mean, she's kind of tough to play into Ganesh, but once you enter that team fight stage... It's going to cause problems, especially into this Ravana taunt into a root, just ultimate lockdown for this Bodega Hive team. Pele gonna be the lock in again, handing that one back to Sniper Glenn, who says they want another try at the god. Didn't work out in game two, but you know, that doesn't mean anything here in game three you can shake that off this now becomes a best of one and sniper glenn wants that goddess now, of fire in their hands i believe sniper actually does hold the kill record on pele this season at 19 kills so you know he's he's maybe feeling a little bad about that last game it's like i want that pele okay i can do so much better on that pele redemption time then for this pick as the Toth is locked in again on the other side. I feel like Scooby Daddy looked very good on it in game two. I definitely don't mind seeing that locked in. Going to be going against the Raijin, you would assume, in that mid lane. Yeah, uh, I don't... Toth has more range. Raijin, I feel like, has more damage. We're going to see how this plays out. This is a classic matchup back when mages were kind of moving towards that solo lane a little bit more just like that brief in between period in that tank meta that we had mm -hmm. it was raijin and those those are the two mages you've seen every game <laughs> well bands in the second phase here really agreeing with what you've talked about throughout this set don't like the horses so ban away the hachiman and then achilles Getting getting a ban here, even though we haven't seen it all set so far, it seems like this uh, Bodega Hive team agreeing with you that it's a pretty good pick in that solo lane. Um, that might be a Ravana solo then. Although I'm not sure if it, if it is Ravana solo, I'm not sure with banning away the Achilles because he can just kick flip out of that execute. Yeah, I, I, it, it, it's interesting to see. We'll have to see where things go. Oh, Blue is going to grab the Cernanos for themselves in, now that the Hachiman is no longer available. We've seen T-Pity on the Jingwei in both Game 1 and Game 2. It's still open. Do you want to see them go back to that once again or maybe mix it up here for Game 3? Um, Chernobog's open. Chernobog what? is open and hasn't been picked up. What? <laughs> I would like to see the uh, Chernobog pick up for 
Calder's good boys. I feel like it's just going to put more presence down, especially into this uh, Serenos. How how are we this deep into the draft and Chernobog hasn't even be, been looked at? That must is... Have for, must have been forgotten about. <laughs> Poor Chernobog. Wow. That is kind of blowing my mind right now as the Mulan is locked in and Jingwei is hovered. Might just see a draft where Chernobog is not picked or banned. I have it's been a while since I've seen a game like that. This Mulan though, one of my favorite warriors in the game, but doesn't always feel the best. How how do you like Mulan currently? I really hope I don't see a prophetic early. <laughs> That's about it. Um Mulan early, I love her early game. She is so good. Damage wise, if you're hitting those arrows, you're sweeping up that solo lane. Mm-hmm. Mulan late, eh, you can try, but it's it's going to get really tough. You know, you need a, a jungler who's going to hyper dive with you as you provide that CC, as you provide all of the extra damage that comes out of Mulan, because she's just. It's going to hurt once you get in there. Yeah. Uh, I can't believe the Wukong made it to 10th pick in the draft as well. No Chernabog, Wukong makes it to the end. Uh, that's just a crazy draft that came out here. But all five members on both sides locked in. Game three between these two teams. And I hit you with the hard question again, Iso. Who do you think drafted the comp that's going to get them the, the set win here? I don't that Athena Ravana is it's scary, and then you've got the Wukong Sun, you've got the Theranos Polymorph Cripple Root. There's a whole lot of CC coming out of Bodega High's draft with not a whole lot to match it over in Calder's Good Boy's side. Yeah, I mean, what, you have Ganesh with with his CC, the the bow coming out of Mulan, and then some knockups outside of outside of ultimates from someone like Green Dragon. Definitely more more damage heavy on the side of Call of Duty Good Boys, while Bodega Hive have the CC in spades. I, I think I have to agree with you. I, Athena Athena's just such a force right now. It's it's hard to to bet against a team that that has her in the support role. Yeah, you, you see Athena, you know, you, you were talking about how it's a weird draft. I think the weirdest part is that Athena got through. <laughs> you definitely <laughs> do not want to see Athena ever in a game right now. Yeah, it was a, it was a lot of target bans that allowed some of these meta picks to, to sneak on in to this important game number three between these two teams. It doesn't look like we're going to see the, the Prophetic first, at least, coming out of Lone Wolf. Blue Stone into uh, what I imagine has to be a Soul Leader. Very standard start for a Mulan. So Lone Wolf shifting up what we've seen from, from Game 1 and 2. Now, I, I would like to see the Soul Leader come out for Wukong, too, because that the Soul Leader just puts out so much damage and gives you so much sustain. You don't really need that early game defense so much on Wukong as other warriors like Bologna or Achilles. Can I just say I love this emote from Ganesh? I don't think I've ever seen it before. That is so uh, that is so great. Just rolling around with those little jumps at the end. I, I love it. Minions have spawned. <laughs> little bouncy ball. Buffs have spawned, and Game 3 officially underway here in this Walker Division matchup between Calder's Good Boys and Bodega Hive. I am excited to see how this one plays out. Game 3 is always, always fun, because you've seen what both teams can do when they get that lead, when they get that advantage. It's just about who can get it when it counts, who can be the one to pull ahead to get that set win for their team. Yeah, I 
kind of a strange start for the Serenos, opting for the uh, leader's cowl. I think I think a bluo has gone that uh, every every game so far. Definitely liking that uh, that option to try and give some some help to the team as well in the team fights. Certainly, we're gonna see how it plays out. Oh. Wow. Oh no, a cringe gank in solo lane gives Ben Dizzle first blood and again it's Lone Wolf falling for the first kill in game number three. I guess at this point you wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, I mean Lone Wolf, keep it up man. You gotta you gotta keep giving up those first bloods. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely uh, not the end of the world again, but still gonna feel good for Bodega Hive to find that early kill. I mean, that was at a minute, the minute mark when they found that first kill. So kicking things off quickly, our Bodega Hive here. Lots of pots though for Lone Wolf, not wanting to uh, not wanting to fall like, a second time. Yeah, we can see the Pele getting a little active. Out this Jungle Jimmy now over on the left side got helped get the pick in right. Gonna try and do the same over in left. The silence is good to slow things down, but the Ganesh takes a bit of damage. Not gonna be enough to find a kill, but some good poke over in dual lane nonetheless. On this Robin, Jungle Jimmy's very active here in the early game. Yeah, but at what cost? He's he's losing his shaman camp back there. Go <laughs> if Sniper Glenn realizes, hey, he's not over in the jungle area. He could very well steal away their speed and red too. Sniper wanted to try and find a return kill over in solo, but Wu Kong again just too safe for that to happen. Will instead just help secure the blue buff of Lone Wolf and try to get. A little bit more gold in their pocket as green buff looks like it's going to be successfully invaded by Jungle Jimmy on the other side. Did he did he leave the 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 smalls on that green buff? I don't know. That would be that would be extra extra cringe as a fight breaks out in the mid lane. It's trouble for Scooby Daddy and it is death for the Toth, who can't quite live through the pressure of those two. The buff was successfully invaded on purple as well. The Jungle Jimmy just everywhere on this map right now, but at least that pick was answered back in the mid lane, putting the Toth down for the first time. Oh. Yeah, you're seeing a lot of farm getting taken away from Calder's good boys here. Yeah, you know, a little dangerous to have. What's one pick when you don't have camps? Yeah, yeah, definitely not the early game you'd want with all this farm getting taken away. Not the early game Lone Wolf would want either, at least I would think, but it's been an 0-2 start every time for Lone Wolf, who has, you know, still managed to translate it into to good mid and late games. So maybe this is just, this is just the play style. Let them think they're winning and yeah, then show yeah. them that they're not. A little mental, a little mental uh, for the team. Yeah, yeah. As we get closer to the five minute mark, we're still only four minutes into this game, even though there's been quite a bit of rotations and, and buff stealing so far here. The Jotuns has been finished for both of these junglers. So they can have those ultimates much more often. I imagine we'll see them get more aggressive quickly, but mid is going the way of Bodega Hive. <laughs> With how much Jungle Jimmy's been in the jungle taking camps, I'm surprised he's a level down on Sniper right now. Yeah, uh, just good farming out of Sniper Glen. I guess not. Uh, Sniper has not been in the lanes as much, so even with some of that farm missing, still able to just get everything else that is up and available, like this shield buff that might get looked at. A blue O might be aware of the jungle presence over here is playing pretty safe over there in that dual lane but a, a fairly slow-ish start we've had a, a few kills we've had some invades but oh blue oh 
completely turns around what I was about, the point I was about to make, and gets another pick here. T Pity falls. Yep, that turn of pressure. Especially if you know how to work his one between the different uh, effects that your basics can add. So, Summer and Serenus, I don't know if probably some ADCs know, is a free Quinn size, or Kim size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you just put it on Summer and that's how you play the whole game, right? That's what I do. Yeah. There's other modes, <laughs> it's yellow, that's it. Well, you know, sometimes when you're losing, you like, you like to sit in spring, too. Winter is a nice little frostbound hammer, or what used to be frostbound hammer. Yeah. They changed how that worked. A little grouping in the mid lane here, but not really too much to get for it besides those right side mid harveys that both take a hive pick up. Right around a thousand or so gold in the leader Bodega Hive so far in this game. And, and we haven't seen any clear kind of advantage with the exception of the jungle which is now about a level and a half lead jungle jimmy ticked over to level seven as i was speaking still falling behind a little bit in terms of farm. yeah i mean i think you just look for a little bit more farm a little bit more damage is all that's going to be needed and ben dizzles there to make sure it happens to so juggle jimmy live through the tower yes but a blink from sniper glenn plus the volcanic lightning a one more auto will do it and the cleave will get the job done now ben dizzle could be in a little bit of trouble there's still a lot of damage from this pele just needs to land a couple more as the help of the ganesh but <laughs> wukong just does everything and turns around the kill one for one trade both junglers fall in solo so much range, so much damage. Cludgel is... <laughs> it's an ability, for sure. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I can't believe that, that, that he turned that around. Lone Wolf did fall as well at the beginning of that fight. Now 0-4 on the Mulan, but has the Soul Leader finished? As Green Dragon looking to get aggressive over here onto a blue O, the ultimate's gonna come out, and the ultimate's gonna find the pick. Another kill going the way of Calder's good boys. That was a big rotation coming out of the Raijin who could be in a lot of trouble now. The dash gets interrupted, but still has it available. The route now gonna slow down Green Dragon's escape, but is making some good inroads to get out of here. The final judgment just barely not in range. I think that was on target, just couldn't find the distance. Just right at his toes, just didn't touch him. <laughs> Now you see, if I'm piloting that Rage in there, I don't, I don't, I don't kill Hachiman. <laughs> <laughs> I miss every single one of them. <laughs> I go drums working out for Green Dragon there to make sure that they get the kill and even managing to live. It's exactly what the Calder's good boys want to see from their mid laner. After such a not lights out performance in game one, I feel like they need Green Dragon to be on point here in game two. And maybe Bodega Hive recognize that again, getting aggressive onto the Ryzen, but it's good peel coming from the Ganesh. Is it gonna be enough though? Green Dragon with a sliver of HP can't get away from Jungle Jimmy, who's now turned their attention towards the elephant, who's in a lot of trouble. Sniper Glint's here to try and get some peel going, but here comes Defender of Olympus as well. They want this pick can ben dizzle find it with the damage so close a sliver of hp but raw is still alive bull underneath the the tower will seal the deal but now sniper glenn's gonna answer back gets the pick onto jungle jimmy trading out the life of the support and this feels more like game one where these these scrappy engagements just have complete journeys through the jungle as the chasing never stops yeah like these engagements they're going on for so long i couldn't imagine even keeping up with everything down on the floor here like <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like that kind of play style suits either of these comps better than the other um i think this rapid engagement go fight hard 
is definitely what Calder's good boy wants. You know, you've got this Ravana who's super tanky. You know, even without tank items, he's dumb tanky. I think he gets 30% mitigations from his ult. Yeah, and, and with the shields, it just it definitely feels hard to it, hard to kill a Ravana even who's full damage sometimes. You know, you get this overconfident Ravana running in to a Pele who is going to shred you. Oh, oh, poor Lone Wolf falls again soloed in the solo lane. Ben Dizzle is just running the show on this Wukong. Jungle Jimmy's trying to run the show over in the left lane. A little bit more damage is all that's going to be needed. T-Pity can't quite find enough, but Sniper Glenn will at least get the one-for-one -one trade. Now Blue-O trying to turn things around and give his team the advantage over here, but not going to be able to do it. Sniper Glenn with a double kill on the Pele, but the tier one tower falls. Uh, I'm gonna leave it to you to decide who that was worth it for. Uh, T1 tower, double kill, I don't know. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're breaking onto the realm, like, you know, yeah, it, I think that was like even. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. And... Beacon's up now. Yeah, but Defender of Olympus away, actually, a, a rotation over towards the solo lane as, again, the Lone Wolf is in trouble but has some help this time, has the backup. It's good knock up and some damage onto Dart Dumbledore who has to leave this fight now. But Ben Dizzle does not want to, gets hit by the bow and a lot of damage actually coming out from Green Dragon. This could be the moment where they get the kill onto this Wukong, but no, just gonna use that ox form to get away as Sniper Glenn will chase down Darth Dumbledore and find that kill. But Bodega Hive pick up the beacon in trade and might look to get something on the elephant as the fighting is still continuing both in solo and in mid. Sniper Glenn will finally get the pick onto Ben Dizzle, shutting him down now 6-1 and 2 on the Wukong. This is this is what this is the Pele we needed in game two right here. <laughs> Seven and one. Wow. Maybe this not fun yet. Yeah, this is the Pele you love to see. Getting super active early, extending that over into the mid game, just running at people, shredding health bars, sustaining any damage that comes Watch your, your feet! Yeah, it's night and day between game one for what the Pele has looked like or this call there's good boys squad. And in a game three moment, that's exactly what you need from your one of your playmakers like Sniper Glenn coming online at the perfect moment here. Yeah, this is, this is actually a repeat of game one, I think. Teams are fairly even coming into this. Yeah, just around a thousand gold between these two teams. Gold Fury and Pyromancer still available, and it looks like Bodega Hive want this Pyromancer. is going to be spotted out now by the side of Calder's good boys. And actually, the Dark Pillars comes out. Look at Jungle Jimmy's health bar. It was absolutely deleted, and the tick damage from the Raiju is enough to get the kill. Jungle Jimmy falls, and Pyromancer, the real victor there, is still standing for the moment. <laughs> the real victor. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of perfect for Call Those Good Boys. They get the Gold Fury, they stop the Pyromancer, and they get a pick onto the Robin. It's exactly what you'd want. Mm -hmm. My team watching this Watch game, they're like, man, I really wish I said to pilot a Pele. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't jungle to save my life, Pele or not. So props to you for being able to play any god in that role. <laughs> now, 15 minutes in, gold actually even, not even that little thousand gold that we saw earlier with that gold fury taken by Calder's good boys, just 200 gold between these two teams. T-Pity could be in trouble though, has to use the ultimate. This Bluo is chunking right now, gets the polymorph, one more auto, hits and T-Pity falls, soloed by Obluo, who's swinging 
on this Cernanos now has the Xe and the Dominance, and you can just feel the damage. Green Dragon's gonna try and answer back, but might not have quite enough damage. Has the help of the Ganesh on the way, but isn't gonna be able to find too much, and that opens the door for the Pyromancer for Bodega Hive. It's really just Sniper Glenn who might be able to do anything about this, is walking in that direction to maybe steal it away. The dash in, though, from the Athena will make sure the Pyromancer goes the way of Bodega Hive. Yeah, you see this Theranos pick, and I'm... I've been seeing this this hunter a lot more lately. You know, it's really good to play defensively or offensively. You now you get that dash to get away or dash in, that polymorph to secure a kill or to stop a push. It's really good to play on either side of the board, from behind or from ahead. That's got to be so annoying. I, I mean, I know it is, but Dizzle stuck between three is about to get altered and just presses four, sits up on a cloud for a bit, and then birds away. Nothing that College Good Boys could do to get that pick. They might try to find something on the Scooby Daddy here who takes a lot of damage, has to use the beads and the Aegis, but nowhere to go. And Green Dragon will get credit for that kill. That's a good pick onto the Toad, who's now 0-2. Dark Dumbledore could be the next target of aggression, but this Athena's tanky is able to just walk away from the damage. It's like they're zoning for fire, but no one's on fire. They're just bumping up those damage numbers. Yeah, the blues over there on the split push took down T2. Yeah, that's got to be worth it for them. I don't know. Is mid laner, mid laner life traded out for T2? Is that worth yeah, I feel like that's worth more gold for the team than somebody's life. There's a three level difference in terms of support between these two teams. Ral has, has quite the advantage over the Athena right now, but that's not stopping Dark Dumbledore from getting aggressive here on the beacon. Bodega Hive don't want to give this one up for free. Or Blue has to use the beads to get away from the root. We'll have to back up. Beacon now might start getting charged up in the other direction, but all members are here with the exception of Jungle Jimmy. That's a lot of damage onto said Athena, but able to make it out. Final Judgment not going to land. So that is a big cooldown down. Oh, Blue it takes a chunk again, but Sniper Glenn can't find the damage. Actually, Sniper Glenn gets shut down underneath the tier one. That was a good Aegis to turn that kill around, and now Scooby Daddy do gets a kill that's not even his name but he's still finding picks here in the mid lane and out of nowhere bodega hive just turned that fight completely in their favor three kills and the beacon and they're going straight to fire yeah i mean you, you, you got three picks why go gold when you can just grab the fire you got that ryzen that mulan that ganesha Oh wait, I'm looking. Yeah, you got. Oh, they didn't get rid of Ryzen. They got the uh, the Pele. Yeah. Like get a nice little early fire for them. Still though, the the game isn't that far off. No, I'm three K between the two teams uh, still fairly close with the fire giant with, with they do have a runic bomb as well that might help them try and extend this gold lead a little bit more in their favor but college good boys are going to answer back at least with an oni fury to give them some wave pressure to slow down any sort of tower sieging that bodega hive are looking to do and his name is scooby daddy too i don't know how i never noticed that before i <laughs> i was i was in the moment i was right even though i corrected myself Ron needs to be a bit careful, but tanking on the Ganesh will just back away. But Darth Dumbledore actually doesn't want, they want this pick on the support. Now Raul has to try and invade, invade the damage here. It's not gonna be enough. Scooby Daddy do will get credit for that one onto the elephant. And now not gonna have the support or the Dharmic Pillars to try and save any of these tier twos should they want to do more than just a soft defense. And it seems like at least in mid lane, they're not even going to put up too much of a fight. Actually, as I say that, they decide to get a little aggressive. Tycho Drenz comes out and does nothing. 
And Bodega Hive take the tower and walk away. It's crazy that Tycho Dumb actually doesn't do too much. He must not be leveling up that ability because he's got a... He's, a, he's only a level down on this boat, so... Well, Blue One needs to be careful. There are four members all over this Cernanos right now in the right lane, trying to turn around some damage, but it is just not enough. And Green Dragon will get yet another kill on this Raja now. Four, one, and one, 21 minutes into the game. Seems like Blue was trying to do that split push life that you can do on a Chernabog. It's a little bit harder to do that on the Cernanos, though, and unable to, to find the tier two or a kill. We'll just end up falling. Losing Fire Giant on your ADC doesn't feel good at any point in the game, but Jungle Jimmy walking into three, confident on this Robin, and seems like for good reason, has to use the alt, but manages to just get out of all of the potential damage that could have been there. Yeah, now, I mean, look, at, look how much damage they actually did to him, though. <laughs> like, yeah. That's a Ravana for you. And then, you know, like I was saying at the beginning of the stream, he did get a buff, up 5% scaling for his 1, and then up 10% for his ult. So his 1 scaled 95% of his physical power, and his ult is scaled 110%. Yeah, definitely been putting out the damage on the Robin. Not really at the top of the damage charts or anything, but the times where you see him just go in on a single target, it's a lot of damage onto those backliners. That's just going to get more and more intense as the starter gets upgraded and the, the recipe gets sold. Jungle Jimmy has the potential to really kind of put his team in the driver's seat even more than they already are. Ravana is always really fun to play, you know. Ability, auto, auto, ability, auto, auto, ult, somebody's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like they're digging hives. That far. They're thinking about this T2 tower, but will decide against it as the almost the entirety of Calder's good boys show up on the defense. It's just T-Pity who's on the split push right now, working on the T1 in left. Fire Giant due to respawn in 43 seconds, and already Bodega Hive are taking positional advantage around that. Might try to find some damage onto Lone Wolf. It seems like they can't decide if they want to take a fight right now, or if they don't want to take a fight. They're kind of just getting some poke damage on. Yeah, you're definitely looking at this, and then you've also got T-Pity over here split pushing your T2 now. So you're not sure what you really want to do besides getting a little bit of poke out. Lone Wolf takes a lot of damage, but is able to make it out. Tycho Drums can't find the kill, but Sniper Glenn can find the kill onto one. Green Dragon will get the kill with the tick damage onto Obluo. All the while, the chase is on for T-Pity, who's just getting run at by Jungle Jimmy on the other side of the map. Ben Dizzle takes a lot of damage and gets stunned out. Jungle Jimmy will find that kill, but it's at the cost of almost entire the entire rest of his team. Now Fire Giant is going to get started up. They don't have their ADC here, though, for the Shred, but they're still going to work towards it because it's just the, the support. It's just Darth Dumbledore, who's local on this side of the map, and not going to opt to even try and contest it. So it's going to take a little bit longer than normal, but Fire Giant should end up going the way of Calder's Good Boys here, 24 minutes in. Yeah, that's what you need is Calder's Good Boys. Even though your ADC doesn't have that Fire Giant buff, you know, your Ryzen has it, and he is going to start putting out some serious damage. He hit level 20. So his abilities are going to be smacking that Raiju is just going to start ticking away at people's health. Somehow, Bodega Hive have the gold lead, though, still. Even after that Fire Giant, it might shift once the any sort of tower aggression starts happening for Calder's good boys who are charging up that beacon, but just in time, Darth Dumbledore's gonna get over there to uh, 
interrupt that as Pyromancer goes in the way of Bodega Hive as well. And now Raul is in between three members just stalling out, trying to hope for this beacon to go for it as they also get the Gold Fury at the same time. That's what the elephant was doing, was just zoning for that fury, but actually might have zoned a little bit too well. Absolutely deleted by the chunky autos of Obluo. And now the chase is on for more. Green Dragon able to dash away, but Lone Wolf might not be able to do the same thing. Lone Wolf in a world of hurt, but still lives with a sliver of HP and buys enough time for Sniper Glenn to get one, for T Pity to get two, and Lone Wolf is still alive. Sniper Glenn looking for yet another. That was the clone. I got baited but might try to turn things around. Vendizzle will get one kill, but it's a delayed triple for Sniper Glenn, who gets yet another Vendizzle now, the one in a lot of trouble on this Wukong, who's very safe, but t Pity will have, does not have the dash. Gonna use the alt to try and find this kill. The blink in from Sniper Glenn as well. Vendizzle wasted a lot of time, but will end up falling. Yeah, that's just a great fight for Calder's Good Boys. You know, that put them... That gave them the gold lead now. Instead of Bodega Hive by almost a thousand. We're gonna see some tower fa towers fall here. Yeah, just sh shred through that tier one. Looks like morale worked so hard to get that beacon before dying. Just gonna make sure that the beacon indeed goes the way of Calder's good boys. They'll grab that for themselves. That means the Titans are gonna be unleashing here shortly in the solo lane. Uh, do you wanna see Calder's good boys push with their Titan or use it as a distraction to do something else? Uh, I think they pressure, I think they pressure Bodega Hive's Titan and then they go Fire Giant. Cause that Fire Giant's going to be spawning around that time. So you want, you want your Titan to be pushing up into the tower. It's a shame it's on the solo side, you know, so Bodega Hive still actually does have a chance to steal that away. Looks like Calder's Good Boys are going to look towards this tier two in left first and wipe that one off the map and Dizzle. Just going to clear the wave, nothing he can do to stop what they're looking for. They actually might want to look to take a fight over here in the left lane. All the while, Jungle Jimmy is split pushing now with the help of, yeah, it looks like the uh, the ADC or blue over there. And as we see fighting happening in the left lane as well, both teams are pressuring towards a Phoenix right now. And it looks like, yeah, Calder's good boys. They want to push into this Phoenix. They don't care about what's happening on the other side. Lone Wolf gets one kill onto Scooby Daddy Do. Sniper Glint doing everything they can to keep their Phoenix on their side alive as the Phoenix over here is getting low. Raul will fall to it, but two kills go the way of Calder's good boys before a blue O gets the, the shutdown onto Sniper Glint. The left side bird on the side of Bodega Hive falls. The right side bird on the side of Calder's good boys falls. So they trade Phoenixes, they trade kills. That Titan of Bodega Hive is still marching. Yeah, that Titan is still marching. It's about to march into your Titan room. You don't have any more backdoor protections. Right, your base is completely cracked open. It will and you manage. Also got Fire Giant spawning here pretty soon. In 20 seconds of that comes up, but the Titan will be driven back and. I mean, the left side Phoenix always going to be more valuable, right? So Calder's good boys, they have that advantage to the, that they got for themselves. Yep, definitely what you want going into this, what looks like it's going to be an EFG unless they can burn it in 30 seconds. Well, Blue is yeah. nearby, had picked up that Pyromancer. Wow, that... that positioning was happening, but here we go. There's a start up the fire giant. T Pity is gonna try and burn it down with the help of Green Dragon. Oh, Blue O, really the only one nearby to try and steal this one away, but unable to. That was close. Calder's good boys will secure that EFG. No, I actually Hello. looks like it might just be a normal fire giant. It was yeah, killed but... maybe right before it happened. But now they're gonna look to take this fight around the blue buff. Ben Dizzle is disappearing, but Wukong is safe. Wukong's on the cloud. Can Bendizzle make it out? The blink in from Lone Wolf, not gonna find the mark. 
but it doesn't matter. Calder's good boys chasing underneath this tier two tower to begin their siege properly. T Pity though, probably shouldn't be the one taking up the tower. Yeah, T Pity there just taking tower shots. You know what? I'm the ADC. I could also be a support. Let me go ahead and just come in here. Yeah, it looked like that fire giant dropped at 29.59. Wow. I guess they didn't really have a choice. I mean, Oblua was there trying to trying to steal it away. They just had to, to burn it. They had to secure it. And they do end up getting it, even if it's not EFG. Still a buff that's going to try and help them out here as they jump underneath the Tier 2, which will del evaporate underneath the autos of t Pity and the crew. And now they might look to push down this Phoenix. Oblua has been pushing out fire waves this whole time. Will back now to help on the Phoenix defense. But here in step, the call. There's good boys. Where did T-Pity go? Final Judgment plus Jungle Jimmy means a dead Jing way. And it might be even more as Lone Wolf falls. Jungle Jimmy gets a double kill. And they're looking for even more on the back end. The Raijin damage is good, but it's not enough. Jungle Jimmy gets three. And now the chase is on for Green Dragon, trying to buy enough time for that dash to get back up. But actually dashes in aggressively. Gets the... Kill on to Jungle Jimmy, but not before Jungle Jimmy gets the quadra kill and shuts down Green Dragon. That was such a ballsy move from Green Dragon to go back yeah. in there. I guess he got the kill? I mean, shutting down Jungle Jimmy into this fight is going to be really nice. You, know, you've, you now have two Phoenixes down for Calder's, or for Bodega Hive. Either two phoenixes down they've just got that t2 up in mid you've got fire minions gonna crash into fire minions that's what you're looking for sniper glint gonna blink in try to find something here because t pity's on the way as well nothing no blue could do up way too far in that solo lane and pays heavily for it gonna be dead for the next 55 seconds Yeah, that's really rough. Sniper still does have this fire giant buff, so you gotta watch out for that. This Pele, definitely a different Pele than what we've seen in game two. Yeah. What, game two was was not even 5,000 damage already? 29k on the Pele yeah. here. Night and day. Second from bottom, game two. Second from top, game three. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> completely different mid t2 gonna fall but bodega hive have everyone but oblua here for this defense in the mid lane looks like it might be a little bit of a split over here as t pity's in right members walking over towards the left lane to get this weekend phoenix the still remaining dharmic pillars comes out they're gonna take this fight they don't have a wave but they don't feel like they need one it seems taiko drums used Kofal comes through as well, but not going to find any kills. Here goes Lone Wolf into the back line, but Obluo has respawned and will get rid of that Mulan. And Scooby Daddy Do will find a pick on the Sniper Glint as well. That was aggressive. And Green Dragon will get two, actually. This Raijin damage is officially online. But Calder's good boys, they don't find the Phoenix. They lose two kills. T Pity, though, didn't get the memo and jumps in. Make that three deaths that they lost on that siege attempt. Just a little off the mark with that one auto. That would have been death for Scooby Daddy Doo there. It's so sad to see. Well, we're... I'm, I mean, game state-wise, yes, there's a Phoenix down and right for Bodega High, but their left side has respawned. There's no more fire waves. EFG gonna spawn in 20 seconds. T-Pity's not even gonna be up for 30 seconds. I mean, if you're about to dig a hive here, do you feel comfortable stepping up to this fire giant or do you still just have to kind of turtle for a bit? Uh, I, don't, I don't think you have to turtle. You could step up to the fire giant, but I definitely wouldn't start dropping it. I think I wait for Calder's good boys to feel confident enough to take this EFG. Well, they are stepping up deep into the jungle here, getting some vision down. Trying to make sure they're the ones with vision control around this fire pit. This will be the first enhanced fire giant of the game. Even more important for both teams to try and get it, Bodega Hive 
could really use it to pull themselves back from this position that they're in, even though gold is still somehow completely even between these two teams. 65. Base is cracked. I think this EFG decides the game here. I 100% I agree. I, I feel like if, if uh, EFG and just a couple picks could spell disaster for whatever team falls. Pyromancer getting looked at by Calder's good boys. They'll pick that one up for themselves while everyone else is just dancing in the jungle. I'm sure all 10 players on both teams know how important this next fire giant is. We're going to see no more fire minions on that right wave. That phoenix is officially back up. Which Everybody. team's going to take this EFG? That's that's the real question. Do not uh, it really is. I mean, it seems like everybody's put their tap shoes on because we are just dancing around this fire giant yeah, right now. True. Neither team wanting to get too aggressive. Just finding a little bit of poke here and there. Pushing out waves here and there. Classic. Fire Giant dance between the two. Do you want to see either team get aggressive, like bait a Fire Giant pull, or get aggressive and try to take a fight? I think whoever starts the Fire Giant loses. In this situation. <coughs> so what you're saying is, is anybody watching, I hope you grabbed popcorn, because we're going to be here for a while, if that's the case. Yeah. Sniper Glenn and Scooby Daddy Do fighting it out over here, or should I say Sniper Glenn taking a lot of damage and using beads over here on the left side of the map. But now it could be the go button and Obluo will fall. Lone Wolf setting that up for Green Dragon, using the ultimate to get out, but here's the blink from Jungle Jimmy trying to find a return kill and they will. T Pity falls and now it could be Rawl who's in trouble, but Sniper Glenn finds the pick onto the Toth in return. Ben Dizzle uses the ultimate as Lone Wolf falls to Jungle Jimmy. And Rawl trying to make it out on double this Ganesh kill. gets stunned and Jungle Jimmy finds like a double three. kill. Sniper Glidden falls. The Elephant and the Raijin, all that stand on the side of Calder's good boys. Ben Dizzle does not want to give this kill up, takes a bit of damage from the Raijin, but is able to live through it. All in all, a three for true trade favoring out Bodega Hive. Yeah, I mean... It looks like Bodega Hive's just pressuring right now. That's a little weird. I think an EFG pull, even with just Ravana, would have been what you're looking for there. Ben Dizzle TPs back in here. They might be looking for this mid Phoenix indeed. At least thinking about it. Charging up the dash is Darth Dumbledore. He is going to commit. Dash is underneath the tower. Gets the beads out of Green Dragon, who then uses the Tycho drums. That's a tanky Athena. Able to live through it for the moment. Can Robin Jungle Jimmy with a sliver of HP. Here comes T Pity flying through the sky. Just needs one auto and will land it. Jungle Jimmy will fall on the Robin. The midbird still stands as well. And it's almost like nothing ever happened. We're just going to be back to dancing around this fire giant unless the pick on Jungle Jimmy is going to be enough to give Calder's Good Boys a clear advantage. I think the pick on Jungle Jimmy is a huge advantage for Calder's Good Boys. Uh, I don't know necessarily about starting the fire. I think maybe one more pick is what you're looking for here, but... And Dizzle's around the back, but Sniper Glenn's well aware of it, dashes on towards him. The Fire Giant very low here, though, and Bodega Hive stealing away! They take it! Sniper Glenn gets the kill onto Ben Dizzle, but EFG is around the waist of three members of this Bodega Hive squad who are just on the run and seem to have just maybe made it out of there. That is huge for their game to be able to make sure that that doesn't go the way of all five members of Calder's Good Boys who are still looking to get aggressive, but don't have that all important buff. Yeah, I mean, final judgment comes through right at the right time. Takes, takes EFG. Now, Bodega Hive has to really think, or not Bodega, Calder's Good Boys has to really think, well, what do we do now? Oh, yeah, I mean, if you are Calder's Good Boys here, are you still 
confident to to siege or is this just an extension of the game for the next five minutes as you just wait for that buff to wear off honestly if i'm the jade dragons here i don't think i'm confident to siege into an efg like unless there's a clear advantage on what on one team like say call these good boys all have pots and Bodega Hive doesn't, maybe that's a call for a siege, but I don't think. God, this game just got so much closer. Uh, this is, I mean, we're 41 minutes into this game right now. We're one D aside from either team just being able to walk in with all the damage that they have and completely put this game to bed. And it looks like Calder's good boys, they don't want to give up even a beacon. Staying aggressive in this mid lane. Everyone's here. Scooby Daddy Dew hits a huge final judgment and deletes T Pity. And Lone Wolf has a sliver of HP. This could be exactly what Bodega Hive are looking for. They're getting aggressive now around this beacon. A blink away from Lone Wolf will save his life. But Green Dragon has to use the beads, has to use the Aegis, and still might not make it out. No, can't get away from the pressure. This is disaster for Galder's good boys now. The beads come out from Sniper Glen, but the damage is so much has to use the ult to make it out but ral can't do the same thing will be able to walk away only because lone wolf jumps back into the fray the mid bird falls lone wolf oh, is taking goodness. so much damage lone wolf is just gone it is ral versus sniper glenn against the world to try and keep themselves in this game to keep themselves in this set but the frenzies pop the titan is getting melted and bodega hive will take the set in three was t pity full health there i feel like t pity was full health there I think so. one shit final judgment <laughs> almost one shot and lone too jesus Toast that damage. that final judgment is what called that game yeah that is absolutely insane coming out from scooby daddy d there to hit that and to allow the rest of the team to just get so aggressive and get themselves that game three win that set win put themselves a little bit closer as we get ready for playoffs. That's going to do it for us here, though, with this set. Stick around because at Frank's Retirement Home, we're not done for the night yet. We got more action coming your way in just a few moments.